Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Omer Nadim, and today I'll be talking to you about generator functions and Redux Saga. So Redux Saga is a middleware that's used in Redux to help us get a cleaner, more asynchronous looking style of code. And it's based on an ES6 feature called generator functions. So what are generator functions? So we've typically assumed that a function will run to completion, but generators are a little bit different. So the official uh, definition is that uh, generators are functions which can be exited and later re-entered, and their context will be saved across re-entrances. So what this effectively means is that you can sort of pause the function and then restart it later when you're ready. And uh, generators are also cooperative, which means that we choose when to pause the function, but, and it doesn't stop other code from running, and then we have to reinitiate it when we're ready. So here's a little bit of the syntax. Um, generators are declared using this special asterisk keyword, which comes right after the word function. And a uh, little fact, some call this a superstar. I only read that on one article and wasn't really able to confirm it anywhere, but I thought I'd roll with it. Um, so if you look at this sample code, uh, the function foo is declared with the asterisk keyword. And uh, there's three separate variables, and the function returns the sum of those variables. But there's also a special keyword called yield, which is specific to generator functions. So yield is kind of where the magic happens inside the function. And it's used to pause the function and also give out a value. And the next time we run the function, we can also pass in a value to that yield expression. Um, you can also use the asterisk with the yield, which basically means that it will pause and then delegate its actions to another generator function, which will complete and then come back to the original function. So here's a little bit of summary of how to run the function. It's a little confusing, but uh, I'll walk through an example on the next slide. So we first invoke the function and we store it in a variable. And when we actually run the function, we don't go through the code, but it just gives us back an object, which we can use to iterate through it. So on that object, you can call next, and then it'll break at the first yield that you specified inside the function. And that object that we return gives us a value, which is what is to the right of the yield expression, and done, which indicates a true or false on whether the function is completed. And we can keep doing this until we're done or stop at any point, and it won't affect any of the rest of the code. So here's a small example. Um, the function foo basically takes in an expression for x, y, and z, and it'll pause at each yield. So here's the actual code when we're running it. So we store foo inside of generating foo. And then we call next on it. And the value we get is ask for a value for x. And the next time we run it, we can pass in that value. So it's a little tricky because the first yield gives out a value. And then when we call next on it again, we're actually passing in a value to that yield. So on the last call, the generating.x25, we store a value into z. And we get the final result, which is the value 50 and done, which is true, which indicates that the function is done. So this example is a little trivial, but I think it helps to kind of understand the mechanics of how the generator functions work. So some of the better use cases and what we'll actually use them for are asynchronous functions, which call next when the async function is done. So an example like this, where we use the generator function main, and uh, we start it at the bottom, and then it hits the first yield, which is a request. So request is the function at the top, which will make an Ajax or Axios call. And when it's done, it'll pass in that response to the generator function. So you can split out your async logic into separate functions and still use them inside the generators. So they'll basically do your play and pause for you. So the main place this is used is in Redux Saga, which is what we'll cover next. So in Redux, you know, it handles synchronous actions. And uh, we're usually using a Redux thunk. But Redux Saga is like an alternate to that. And it's a little bit better, in my opinion. 
So it's a library that aims to make handling side effects in React Redux applications easier and better. And you can think of a saga as like a separate thread in your application that's responsible for just the side effects. And since it's a Redux middleware, it can handle all the normal Redux actions and it can dispatch Redux actions as well. So it's all based on the generator functions we just covered. But the good part is that the middleware handles all of the uh, calling next and the yield and pausing and playing it again. So here's some of the boilerplate setup. It's uh, relatively simple. You just import Redux Saga and you create the Saga middleware and mount it on the store in the create store function. And at the bottom you run the root Saga. So our sagas are split up into two categories, which are uh, watchers and workers. This is just convention. You don't have to do it like this, but it makes it a little bit easier to understand. So the watcher sagas basically watch for any action that's dispatched to the store, and then they delegate that action or that listening of that action to a worker saga. And in that worker saga is where you actually sort of process the code and do all your actions. Uh, those watcher sagas are typically in the main root saga function that you'll export and mount on the store. So here's an example on the left. Um, some of these keywords are special Redux saga functions, which we'll uh, look at next, like take every call and put. But basically what's going on is that the watch get products is listening every time that a get all products action is dispatched to the store and then giving it to the other generator function get all products. So inside a get all products, we do an API call and store the result of that into products. And a put does a dispatch, which does an action creator with the products passed in. So on the right hand side, it's a little bit of a more involved example, but it's basically doing the same thing. So instead of take every, they wrap this one in a while true loop, which is an infinite loop, but it's OK with generator functions because they pause and play. And inside a checkout, we select the cart, do a call with that cart, and dispatch to the store if it's successful. And if it's not, we'll dispatch the error. So this is kind of why I like Redux Saga, because you can get like a clean flow of exactly what's going on. And it's a little bit simpler to understand. So you can see that anytime there's a checkout request, you can go to your worker saga and see exactly what you're doing. So these are some of the Saga helpers that I mentioned. Uh, take every basically means that do this worker Saga every time this action comes in. And take latest does the same thing, except that if subsequent requests come in on that same action, it'll uh, cancel the prior ones. So depending on the type of action we're setting up, you can choose one of these usually to initiate. So the effect creators are like call and put and take. And uh, these effect creators return plain JavaScript objects. But given to the middleware, they're like instructions. And the middleware is where the actual iteration happens. So let's see. Um, yeah, the middleware examines each effect description, and then it performs the appropriate action. So the main ones, if you're using this library, it's going to be call and put. I think call is the one we can focus on that it basically does a function and you can pass in optional arguments to it. This is where you'll do like your AP API request. And the key takeaway is that if it returns a promise, it'll pause the saga until the promise is resolved. And you can store that value inside of result and then do a put, which will dispatch that result. Yeah, so these are some of the advantages um, of Redux Saga over Redux Thunk. Like I mentioned, uh, it's a more synchronous looking code with sort of an easy to follow step by step process. And you can tuck away the asynchronicity into a separate part. Um, it allows for fairly complicated flows. So you can do like a call, store that in a variable, and then do another call. And then based on that, do a dispatch with put and do another call. So you can really like layer actions on top of each other and still keep it sort of easy to understand. Uh, sagas are composable. This was basically the yield with an asterisk. So you could set up a saga, which will then delegate to another saga and run that one to completion, then come back to the original one. Uh, one of the advantages is that action creators become pure. 
So your action creators aren't mixed up anymore. Like you don't need a function that returns another function that does a call and then another dispatch. You can basically just have functions that return pure objects. And this, uh, what this separation does, it makes the side effect code separated to the single area of your application, which is the sagas page. Uh, this library has a lot of helper functions and pretty solid documentation. Uh, one last bit of piece, uh, one last piece is uh, testing. So as we're all moving on to Capstone and getting ready for larger projects, I think we've been told that testing becomes a little bit more important. So the Redux tests that we've been writing, we're usually only testing the action creators, like the synchronous actions. But with this, it's a little bit easier to test the async code too because the effect creators return just plain JavaScript objects. And we can test all of our async calls, like in here, basically by iterating over the generator and seeing that the value of the next call matches what you had intended. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, if you're interested, I definitely recommend the uh, Redux Saga documentation. It's pretty clear and walks through a lot of the concepts really well. Uh, thanks, everyone.